Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for taking time and joining us today. Uh, so today's topic is setting up a DNP on our higher end uh, Nexus series models, which is our Nexus 1450 and Nexus 1500 plus. Before I go into uh, detail on programming, I would just like to cover a few topics. So uh, to get to the user manual or the DNP guide, uh, you can go to our website, electroind.com. You can go under the products and you can go under the Nexus 1500 meter. And we have the technical documents, the user manuals and the DNP guide listed under the tech documents. So we have a separate manual for DNP uh, communication. This is a DNP through user manual. So this user manual lists all the points or the parameter that's being supported by the meters. And for this presentation, I'm going to be using a Nexus 1500 as an example. The setting of uh, the meter setup for Nexus 1500 or 4050, they are same. Uh, so I'm just using the 1500 as an example here. Um, I ha already have the user manual downloaded. Um, this is the user manual. So on here we talked about like a different um, functions that meter supports uh, uh, on the DNP side. So DNP is um, the way the DNP protocol works is like the all your parameters, uh, um, typically your voltage, current, uh, power, energy, they are being segregated or grouped into a different um, classes. So you have class 30, um, class one, zero, one, two, three, uh, you can define your own um, parameters for each class. Um, along with this, there is also uh, objects on the DNP they call. Uh, so on the objects, there are different um, um, groups, basically, they call. Uh, so there is, we have a list of objects that meter support. So basically, I'm showing you example, object one, which is our binary inputs, object 10, which is output, and so on, is object 20. Object 30 is our analog signals. So this is object 30, analog input. Analog input is mainly what I've seen most customer use. Um, that object can be used to pull real-time readings, your voltage, current, power, frequency, power factor readings from the meter. There's also an object 20, which is a counter and so on. So we list all these objects uh, on the manual here. It shows you what function code can be used to pull those. Um, also what variation we support. DNP uh, calls a variation, basically by variation, what it means is data type. So like uh, integer is one data type, 16 bit, 32 bit and so on. And the way DNP defines that is using the different variation. Uh, we have, once I go into the profile meter setup, I'll go into much detail. Then if you go down on the manual, uh, it talks about the basic functionality of the different uh, statuses and uh, objects. And if you scroll down, it goes into the much detail of each point, was the object, uh, was the line item, and was the point represent. One important thing to note about this is like um, this range and the units. To explain this, I'll go into like I'll take an example of our basic voltage readings. So voltage readings are object 30. So I'll go into object 30 so we can maybe take an example and explain this a little bit in detail. Okay. So this is an object 30 analog input. And as you can see, it shows the object 30, which have, which have the line and point items. So I'm taking an example. This is the first object uh, point, voltage 80 neutral. And on here, it shows me the range. It starts from zero to three to seven, six, seven. 
and it has the units of 0.1 volts um, um, secondary. And we also show you data type, which is an F4. So this, this data type is important to note because when I read this parameter, we re when I read these registers from the DNP, I would have to do some calculation on my DNP software or DNRTU to convert it to the uh, re actual reading and match it with the meter display. So that's why we list these types at the end. So like this one is F4 and at the end of the manual, we list all this description for the types. So like if I scroll down to all the way end, we list all the data types. So let's say I go to F4 This is the type F4, which is my secondary voltage, current, power readings. And it shows you the math, like typical uh, range that it could support. So like, for example, voltage, like I said, it's from zero to three to seven, six, seven, because it has the frequency range, uh, it has the units. And then we show an example how you can convert the values on the DNP uh, to match the meter display. So like here, I'm sh we are showing example, like this could be the value you can, you are reading from the DNP, uh, the way you convert it into decimal, and this becomes 0.2293 amps in the secondary. And same thing, we are showing example for wars. Then we have the um, different examples. We have the 32 bit formats. Uh, which is ranging from minus three to seven six eight to positive three to seven six eight, and we show the similar example uh, for the wars also. So all this you can see that we are using the units and we are dividing it for th by six five five three six. So this range or this multiplier or div divisor, it's important to note when you are pulling specific values from the DNP. You have to follow this math in order for the to calculate the correct values. So let's take an example. I'm going to go into uh, programming the meter profile. So let's to program the meter settings for the DNP uh, on the Nexus 1450 and the 1500 series. You would use our communicator EXE software, and this software you can download from our website. It's under So in the products, so if I go on the products, there is a software section at the end. For communicator PQA. You can use that to connect to the meter and program all the um, meter settings. You can use it to download the logs from the meter also. So since we are focusing, focusing this webinar on the DNP, I'll skip the rest of the part and just go direct to the DNP section. So first thing I would do is I would hit connect. Uh, then you put in the IP address of the meter, which is this, then I hit connect. It will connect to the meter and then it will bring up the meter information, the serial number, your type. So like you can see this, I'm connected to the Nexus 1500 plus. I'll click okay. So then on the top, you have the different icons. I can look at the real time readings, which is showing me voltage and current and the power readings. This could be an important screen when you want to match the readings you're getting or values you're getting on the DNP versus what's on the meter side. So when I go into the DNP polling, we can show the example and we can try to compare the values here. So like I was saying, anything, you know, changes you want to make on the meter, that's done through the profile. So I'll go into the profile. And this is the typical profile, how it looks on the, uh, we have the tree menu uh, at, on the top, it shows you the type of meters on the bottom. It shows you uh, like a different options. You can have update device to load the settings back into the meter. You can exit, you can save this profile uh, offline. 
So sometimes what happens is like customer buys 10, 15 meters, they want to set up everything same way, they can save the profile and they can load this profile into like all those 15, 20 meters. So that will include all your DNP settings, all logging, the power quality information, uh, CTPD ratios and in, um, IP address settings. Later on, you can go in and modify the transformer ratios and IP address for each meter and give it a different name. So to set up the DNP, our Nexus 1500 Plus can have um, DNP supported over ethernet, which is uh, we call DNP over LAN. And it also can support DNP over RS-485, which is a serial connection. To set up the DNP over serial, you go under general settings, communication, and double click on any one of them. So it shows you uh, different options, different serial um, ports that you have available on the meter. So we have optical port on the Nexus meter. We have a USB port and we have two RS-485 uh, ports. So on the Nexus 1500, this uh, the serial communication serial card is, an, is uh, optional. So let's say if you want to walk, uh, use the DNP over serial for this meter, for Nexus 1500 meter, you would have to have a 485 card when you order the meter. For the Nexus 1450, it comes as a starter. So Nexus 1450 comes with the um, serial port, RS-485 ports as a standard. And you can use any of these ports, port one or two, to to be for the DNP communication. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna use my port one as my DNP port. So I will set up my protocol. You can set up the baud rate, address, um, data bits, parity, and stop bits here. And on the bottom, you can set up the IP address. So let's say if you're using the meter for the DNP over ethernet, this is what the, where the IP address would be set up. And then if you want to set up the more parameters for the DNP or Ethernet, you will go under advanced settings. So here we have a separate tab for DNP or LAN. So this is where you can see, um, we can set up the ports, which is 20,000 as a default uh, and the device address. This is all standard, uh, but you can change it. Let's say I put in manual, and then you can change the port numbers. So sometimes what I've seen is like, if the network or the IT, pers IT department is blocking certain ports, like 20,000, you can change the port number. Uh, you can also put in the security. So like, for example, if you have multiple masters talking to, on the same network. So like I have seen some customers, um, UTD customers, they have two masters uh, on the same DNP network and they want to have only one master have ability to talk to the meter. You can put in the addresses for the masters that is allowed to be talked to the meter. So like you can put in up to four IP addresses and only the ma um, DNP software or the D RTUs within uh, of this IP address can talk to this meters. It's mainly for the security reasons. Uh, if you don't want to use this security, you can just disable it, which is the default also. And once you are done uh, with the IP address settings, you can click OK and OK here. So this was the communication part. Now we will go into the detail of setting up the points for the DNP, which is done under DNP custom class map and DNP level two. So you can double click on this and it will open up the detail window of the DNP. So as you can see, we have them segregated by different tabs uh, for each objects. Right now, we are looking at the object 30, which is like I was saying, analog input. This is where you can set up all the parameters for the real time polling uh, for your analog signals. This is basically, I have set up for voltage, line to neutral, current, I have my watts, wars, temperature, so on. And any parameters you can, you want to add, you can just pick 
some that's not assigned double click on it and it will give you a list of meters uh, recording so let's say I want to add power factor on this so I'll pick one second readings then I'll pick where is my power factor here so there is this is my one second power factor I can add total click OK and this is it so now on the point object 30 point 44 I have my power factor listed another thing we have is a DNP uh, this this is a DNP level 3 uh, you can set up the dead band for the analog signal so the way DNP works is you set up your thresholds pretty much and whenever that D, uh, the thresholds are crossed or meter readings goes above that threshold DNP would gen meter would generate an event and you can pull that event using class 1 2 or 3 so basically you can think of it as like alarm conditions you can set up a window for that alarm whenever that window is crossed you get an alarm and you can read it through the DNP and the way you set up the alarms or the dead band is by using the percentage like you can see right now I have 0 0.01 percentage now let's say um, I want to trigger an alarm when my power factor goes 0.01 percent or like maybe you'll put in 0.1 percent for now so anytime it, my power factor value goes this out of this range I this would trigger an alarm and the way I can pull it is by using one of these classes so let's say I'm using class 2 for this alarms and whenever I read send a signal from the meter from my RTU to read this class meter will respond with all the alarms that's been triggered using the dead band. You can also use class zero to pull everything. So the way the DNP works is it has the class zero, um, which is um, pretty much everything that's set up on the meter. And you have the class one, two, or three that's used for events. So similarly, we give you ability to set up the dead band and assign a class to be pulled. Um, this was for analog signal. Um, also what we do is since the meter, this Nexus meters are using 32 bit uh, as a default, let's say we, we have run into some customers that they use old RTU or they use a SCADA system or a PLC that only supports 16 bit scaling. So that you can set up um, on the meter. So like if I go under the global values, here's where you can define the variation. So like say for example, my RTU, it's only supporting 16 bit uh, values. I can change the dead band, uh, the variation and I can make it 16 bit. This is again, depends on your uh, system or this, uh, the software that you're using to pull the meter. It's just we have the ability to change it on the meter side. Also, we have seen some customer requests that they want to change the scaling of the DNP. Sometimes, uh, meet, since the meter is giving you the readings in the secondary format, which is without your transformer ratios. So let's say, for example, if you're putting in 120 volts into the meter, meter DNP would read 120. It will not consider your CT and PT ratios that you have set up on the meter. So you will need to do that calculation on your DNP side. But sometimes what we have seen is customer, they want to set up the meter in a way that meter would give out readings already in the primary side with all this calculation. So that's why like sometimes we have seen this, if I go back to the analog input, you, have, you can have this custom scaling and you can define your own scaling like I have done here for the analog signal. So this is a 16 bit value where you can define the high and low end for the 16 bits parameter and you can put in the phase uh, range for the voltage, currents, phases, phase angle, uh, power phase, power total. And DNP would scale, or the meter would scale the DNP values accordingly. For this uh, example, I'm gonna use this 32 bit since I want to have enough, or like all the resolution on my setting, on my DNP values. 
So I'll leave this 32 bit and I will uncheck this 16 bit. There's also a few other tabs. So let's say if I go to object 20, which is my binary counters. So counters basically what DNP thinks is the, basically all your accumulators. So my energy is my accumulator. Also, if you are re reading the pulses from different meters, you have ability to tie the pulses from water, gas meters into a nexus meter. And you can read those pulses from the DNP side. So those all gets configured on object 20. So this is where you can set up the, put the point. Let's say I want to have KWH bottom one and floor as my DNP point, I can add them. And you have different options. If you have option cards, you can pull option card inputs. And uh, similarly, like what we were doing on the analog input, you have ability to change the delta. Basically, that's what triggers the alarm or the events. So when you, um, you can assign the change that you can configure the delta and you can assign the classes for that parameter. Similarly, we have object 10, which is used for um, control. So basically, if you want to reset any of the meter settings um, or clear meters accumulators, you can use this object 10 and check any of the boxes that you want to use it. So for example, I want to reset my demand and energy reading on top of the month. I can send the command from my DNP master every month that would clear this readings. I can check the box. Let's say I want to trigger, reset the maximum and I want to reset the demand energy readings. Similarly, you have option to do like other things like reset the accumulators, uh, internal input accumulators, is at the time of use and so on. Along with this, you can have a relay um, trigger for the DNP. So Nexus 1500 plus, you can have ability to add relay cards into the media. So what it does is you, you can use it to control some equipments that's on the site. We have some customer, they use the relay output to trigger or Tripper equipment or tripper breaker that internally controls some equipments to do like a demand control or like power factor correction. Some customer they do power factor correction by turning on the capacitor banks. So you can also trigger or trip those relays from the DNP side. Sometimes we have run into customer that they want to do all those controls or logic from that DNP RTU. So on the PLC, you can define your logic and based on the logic, your PLC would send a command to the meter to trip a relay. You can use the DMP for that. So if I'm doing that, I can enable the boxes for which relays um, I want to trip. So other than that, there is also binary input. So that's something you can use to read um, limit status. So Nexus 1500 plus has alarms that you can set up, um, which are basically different than the DNP events. The, meet, the alarms you set up on the meter, that's based on um, instantaneous readings and you set up based on the threshold and you can read those alarm conditions, we call it limit from this DNP also. And there are also but other flags that you can read, the DNP status, uh, the meter stats, and so on. So we have run into some customer, they want to read the meter health status. So there are some miscellaneous flags that you can read from the DNP. Sometimes customer want to read, like what's the meter, whether meter is healthy, it's, it's recording properly or not. And based on that, they want to generate alarms. So you can reuse these flags for that. So like you can see, it has a flag for RAM status, which is basically a memory on the meter and it has the time sync and so on. So that's, you can use object one for that. Other than that, it also has a bunch of um, other settings. So let's say 
you can use the DNP to synchronize the meter time. So Texas 1500 plus has a bunch of um, few options to sync the meter time. You can have it sync to GPS clock. You can have it with the NTP network time protocol and, and have it sync to your network. Or you can use our software to sync the meter time. Also, you can have ability to sync the meter using the DNP. So if I'm using it, the DNP, I would enable this and set up the interval how often I want to sync it. Let's say I leave it at one. Also, we have a DNP auto freeze schedule. So this is something you can use if you want to freeze the meters register uh, on the periodic basis. We have some exam customer, they use it to sync, freeze the meter registers on a daily or monthly basis. So what happens is when you, when the meter see, uh, this free schedule occurs, meter takes the snapshot of your current readings. It could be your energy, your maximum demand, your voltage current, and it takes them and put them into different set of registers that you can pull after it's, it's being frozen. So let's say you freeze the register every, every month and later on you can download that information to calculate your bill. Basically it gives you a monthly consumption KWH and it gives you max demand. So this is where you can set up those freeze intervals. Also, um, you can set up unsolicited responses. So this is something you can use. Let's say you have hundreds of these devices, hundreds of DNP meters or DNP devices on your network and you want to be notified as soon as one of the device hits an event or alarms. Rather than having your software to go around and pull those 100 meters, meter can send you a uh, notification that there is an alarm. So this is something meter would send out without uh, anybody, any requests from the master. So that's where you can enable this. You can set up the destination device address, DNP address, timeout, and what class to be used for. For now, I'm not using this, I'll leave it disabled. And once you're done making all these changes, I have an option to save this, so I can, see, I can play around with it later on, on my computer, or you can have it update on the meter side. So once you click update, it gives you option that the, the, for the settings that you do not want to change. You can leave them unchecked if you want to have everything updated on the meter. Um, you can hit continue and that will update the meter and with the new settings that we put in for the DNP. After that meter is going to reboot. So that's when it, right now it's waiting for the meters to reboot. And once it's rebooted, meter uh, software will connect back to the meter and it will bring up the settings that we added um, that was, that's in the current meter profile. Now we're gonna go into, now we have set up the meters. Now we'll go into the DNP part, the DNP communication. For this example, I'm using a DN, a ASC test set uh, for the test, which is pretty much like um, commonly used DNP test uh, protocol uh, software. This is something you can use to verify the communication and the points that you are receiving. And once you have it set up, you can use transfer that, like you can set up the communication or the pair points on your RTU on P PLC to do the automated polling. So the way DNP, so this software work is first I have to go in and select the protocol. So like this, for this example, I'm using DNP over LAN WAN, which is Ethernet. So I'll select like that. Then you go under tools, properties, and DNP. Then you can put in the IP address of the meter. So I already have the IP of my meter. You can put in the address. And you can see on the left, it shows me options for the requests. So I can pull any of these uh, objects or section to get the meter readings. So 
let me delete what I had. So let's say for example, I want to plot everything that's set up on the meter. So this, I have option for class 0, 1, 2, 3. So I can double click on it. And this is where I can put in the destination address, which is, I have set up one as my meter. And select that and hit send. So it sent the request to the meter and this is the request and the response. Basically, this is the raw DNP messages. And on the right, it shows me the points and the values for that. So for example, let's go back to our profile and let's see how we have it set up. So for example, this is our first point, object 30, which is an analog uh, input. And first point is voltage to neutral. So if I go back to my DNP and look at my analog input, 0, 0.0, this is the value I'm getting. And so you can see this value doesn't match with what's being displayed on the meter. So let's see if I go back to the meters setting, I can see my meter is reading around 1200 kV and the DNP is showing me this value. So now you can go in and look at the manual where we had the settings where we were initially where we we're talking about the uh, math that I would have to do in order for the uh, meet DNP values to match with the meter display. So I'll use this as an example. Let's say um, I'm reading this value, which is seven, eight, six, four, Seven. Now, according to math in the manual, I will need to divide it by six five five three six. So I would take this divided by six five five three six, and it gives me the secondary value, which is one twenty point zero zero. So basically, this is the secondary value meter is seeing one twenty volt being applied on the meter side. Now, this is like I said, this is without the CT and PD ratio. So after I get this value where I would have to multiply this with my transformer ratio. So for that, I will look at the meter profile and see how my transformer ratios are set up. So this is how I have set up. This is my voltage transformer. Basically it's 120, 1200,000 down to 120. So I would use this number and multiply these values. So see. I'll multiply this by 120. Then divide by 120. So this is the actual voltage, 1,200,000. Um, then I, would, I want to convert it to kilo, then I would divide it by 1,000. So this is what I get when I convert the whole value. And if I match the meter display, meter readings, it's around that value. So it's important to note, uh, go through the example like understand the example like what we have displayed on the um, manual because each parameter or each value can have a different math depending on what it's reading. So for example, the power factor, it has a different math since it's a four quarter meter. Phase angle could be a different uh, type, different data type. So that's why we show these examples uh, in detail. Um, so each values, you can refer to it and what you are reading. So let me go back to the, so each point or each line, we have shown this data type that you can refer for the example at the bottom of the manual. And you can do the same calculation for the rest of the TNP sections. Like this is, I'm showing, I have readings for the power factors, um, frequency and so on. And I can follow the same similar calculation based on the manual and come up with the values that to be displayed on uh, DNP side. 
So this all calculation I'm doing on the calculator, that's something you would do on your DNP masters or DNP software. And to, if you want to avoid that, you can set up the 16-bit scaling like I was talking about earlier and scale the meter values according to your CT and PD ratio. Um, of course, it would use, lose the resolution because you're trying to fit 32-bit values into 16-bit. But that's something you can com come up with a better calculation to make a balance between the range and the values you're receiving on the DNP side. Uh, along with this, we have a bunch of options. So like, for example, I have classes. Uh, let me delete this. So let's say if I want to class read class one only, I'll select that and send a request. So as you can see, um, meter did not respond with any values since it did not had any event. So like I was saying earlier, meter would only respond to the class one, two, three, four if there is an event or there is an alarm condition on the meter side. If there is no alarm, meter will just acknowledge and will not respond with any um, data, data parameters. So this is something you can use. So if you want to poll the classes, pull the alarms more frequently. Sometimes we have seen customer, they want to pull like class one, two, or three more frequently compared to class zero to read, to be able to read the events more quickly. Sometimes I have seen customers, they, they just want to use class zero and they would do all the alarms condition on their RTU or PLC. It all depends on the application and the functionality that you have available on the RTU or the PLC. Uh, it's just we give you options whether you can do it on the meter side or you can do it on the RTU side. Along with this, you have option to pull individual classes like this is analog input, which is an object 30. I can pull this also. So let's say I want to read all the classes, uh, analog inputs, and then I can set uh, I can only read that and it shows me all 44 parameters. And that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, you can have, you can define your own custom map and then you can come up with the template. Let's say we have a lot of customers, they want to build the template before they get to the, get the meter in hand you can all those do all those customization before you even have the meter. Software, our communicator software has these profiles built in that you can go in and modify them. And once you receive the meter, you can upload it into the meter. And that um, concludes our basic uh, DNP setup. Um, now we'll open up the session for questions.